I'm Tom Baker, and at Chasing Cars, we make no secret of the fact that we generally prefer station wagons to SUVs. They're easy to see out of, better to drive, and in general, they're cheaper and better equipped. And if you can live without the high driving position of an SUV, both of these wagons with me today are actually a better buy in their respective ranges than the SUV alternative. On my right is the Volkswagen Passat, which is actually quite a bit larger than the Tiguan SUV you might have been considering. And on my left is the Mazda 6 wagon, which is a good alternative to the CX-5. But out of these two alternative family haulers, which is the best? Well, let's jump in and find out. Mazda interiors tend to have a strong family resemblance, but the 6 is actually one of their best executed cabins. It's really nice in here, really sporty, with a great low driving position, supremely comfortable leather seats, and a new steering wheel that falls right to hand. The only way that the CX-5 bests the 6 interior is that it mounts the shifter and the rotary dial for the navigation higher up, which is more ergonomic. Speaking of that dial though, that's how you control this 7 inch touchscreen while the car is on the move. It's a great method of interaction, however the screen's graphics are getting a little bit cheesy nowadays. You don't get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but you do get digital radio. The dash in the 6 is really soft, however the door tops are actually a little bit harder but practicality in here is good. There's a really deep central bin with two USB ports, a really big tray ahead of the shifter as well, okay size cup holders and bottle holders in the doors. The Passat really takes Volkswagen's cabin design up a notch with this really classy long horizontal line incorporating the air vents. But that's about the only flourish in here because the Passat is certainly more conservative than the Mazda. However, it's really high quality. Everything that you touch in here is soft and there's a really convincing thud to the doors in this car. The seats are comfortable in any Passat, but this is the R-Line, which gets these beefy sports buckets, which are particularly supportive, although the leather isn't quite as supple as what you get in the Mazda. The driving position is decent, however. The technology in here revolves around this 8-inch touchscreen, which is easy to use, and it's the only one here to get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. However, it doesn't have digital radio. On upper spec Passats, you can get this 12-inch digital driver's display, which is really cool. The storage in here though is good. There's a movable central armrest and there are large cup holders, a tray ahead of the shifter and nice felt line door bins. In the back of the Mazda 6, you get a good amount of space. For me as a six foot adult, I've got good headroom, I've got good leg room, but my toe room is a little bit constricted back here. However, the kids will be absolutely fine and they'll love the fact that these rear seats in the higher spec cars are actually heated and you access those buttons from this flip down console where you also get two cup holders. Plus, air vents are standard on the Mazda 6 here in the back. The Passat is much larger in the back, and for me, I've got excellent headroom and really good legroom and tow room sitting behind myself. It's absolutely massive. These seats aren't heated, but you do get a pull-down centre armrest with another pair of cup holders. You get air vents as standard, and this particular Passat has an adjustable temperature zone back here. Plus, there are big bottle holders in the doors. Unlike its SUV counterpart, the Mazda 6 does do without an electric tailgate, which is a slight annoyance, but the door is really light and easy to open. And once it is open, you'll find that this wagon has way more space than the CX-5 SUV, although not as much as the Volkswagen Passat. You get 506 litres back here, it's a good square shape. The boot uh, lip is really low, so it's easy to slide things in and out. It's a fairly clever boot. Firstly, the cargo cover actually connects to the door so it doesn't get in your way, which is absolutely fantastic. I don't know why other brands haven't copied that. You get a couple of shallow bins either side of the floor. You get a couple of shopping bag hooks too. And like the Volkswagen, you can fold down those rear seats from right here to get about 1,600 litres of space. But it's the Passat which is the big daddy of wagon boots because behind this electric tailgate, you find an enormous 650 litres of space. That's actually almost 10% bigger than the Tiguan, which has the biggest boot in the medium SUV class. So you get my point about how wagons are more practical. It's a really clever boot as well, because not only do you get four easy tie down points, there are two bins either side of the boot floor. There are plentiful shopping bag hooks in there. And you can also lower the rear seats from right here in the boot, which is handy, giving you more than 1700 liters of boot space, full marks. The first thing you notice when you jump into the Mazda is just how superior its driving position is. It sounds like a bit of a cliche, but if you could turn a Mazda MX-5 into a station wagon, this is how it would feel from behind the wheel. So the 6 wagon feels sporty, but is it sporty? 
Well, it kind of is. The handling is actually really impressive because the 6 has this really light and super agile front end that just loves to be chucked into a corner. The steering has near perfect weighting as well and it really communicates what the front wheels are doing. So the whole experience of driving the 6 wagon is actually pretty fun. But to really enjoy the car, you'll want to splash out an extra $2,850 on the diesel. Mazda produced an excellent 2.2 litre twin turbo diesel, making 129 kilowatts of power and a big 420 newton metres of torque. It's effortless, it's actually more quiet and refined, and it's really frugal. The car's standard engine is a 138 kilowatt, 250 newton metre, 2.5 litre aspirated petrol four. And it's fine, but it feels a little bit sluggish around town. It's quite noisy actually when you rev it out. And it's not that frugal. We got about nine liters per 100 kilometers in town with this engine. So going for the diesel is worthwhile. The 19 inch wheels look great and the ride quality is actually quite fine with them. However, the 17 inch wheels on the lower end models will be more comfortable. And more noise insulation would improve the car as well. It's a little bit too much road noise is transmitted through to the cabin. On the safety front, all sixes come with AB, blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert, which is really impressive. However, only the flagship Atenza gets worthwhile features like active cruise control and lane keep assist. Hopping into the Passat after driving the Mazda, it immediately feels larger and a fair bit more grown up. But the character of the Volkswagen really depends on the engine that you go for. The basic 132 TSI petrol is frugal and fun. It's definitely better than the two and a half litre petrol that you get in the six and the 140 TDI diesel is really economical and a great uh, all round engine. However, if you go for the 206 TSI Passat, you're in for quite a surprise because it uses the Golf R's turbocharged four cylinder, making 206 kilowatts of power and 350 newton meters of torque. Now, this is a wagon with conservative styling, but it's devilishly fast as a family car and really appealing, something like a cut price Audi S4. As you also have all wheel drive to claw you out of corners. You've got excellent Pirelli Cinturato tires and just great dynamic ability. But you don't need the 206 TSI, which is quite expensive, to have fun because every Passat gets a really nice chassis that corners remarkably well. The ride quality is okay on these 19 inch wheels because the 206 TSI gets adaptive dampers. But on lower spec cars with fixed dampers, you'll definitely want to get smaller wheels to ensure you have a comfortable ride. Noise insulation though in the Passat is really great. Now like the Mazda, AEB is standard across the Passat range, but to get blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert, you'll need to step up to at least the comfort line spec. But that car is well set up for safety because it also gets active cruise control and lane keep assist as standard. So what we have here are two of the best family cars you could buy, but both the six and Passat wagons are for the thinking person, not the follower who will simply buy an SUV they don't really need. But which of these is best? The Mazda 6 still looks great with a long low roof line. It's the most sporty with a great seating position and a phenomenal twin turbo diesel. It's the driver's car of the two and it looks the best. By contrast, the Volkswagen Passat is the comfortable choice. It does distances brilliantly. It's incredibly quiet and it has so much space. The sleeper 206 TSI is appealing, but the Passat takes the win simply because it nails the wagon brief by being safe refined and big enough for everything you can throw at it.